Hi, I'm Caitlin, and this is Book Chats. And today I'm going to talk to you guys about the 16th debut that I read in 2016 for the 2016 debut author challenge, and that was Girl in Pieces by Kathleen Glasgow. So this is a book about a girl who ends up in a, like a recovery center. She uh, caught herself in a way that caused her to lose a lot of blood, and she had to be emergency kind of let into this recovery center. And when I opened it and started reading, I thought, oh man, this is gonna be another book that's completely set in a, like a mental hospital. That is not the case. Because of circumstances, she ends up leaving pretty early into the book and kind of living her life after. And it's about kind of her recovery from not just traumas that kind of uh, led to and amplified and exacerbated that problem and, uh, the ways that she is trying to recover and the things that she is doing around that. That's probably a really bad <laughs> explanation, so of course, as always, I will leave a link to the Goodreads page for this book down below, and you can read about it there in the official publisher blurb and not just my bad blurb. Uh, the notes that I have about this book say that it is dark, honest, and it has a surprisingly good sense of place but it was honestly really hard to read. It does end well, but it was really hard to get there. It took me a long time to get through this book. I read this book because I had heard from a couple people that it was really well done. I'm not sure I would have picked it up if not for that, or that I would have finished it, but that is not because it's not well written. It's just because it's a really difficult book to read. It's difficult to watch the main character struggle through her recovery, and uh, it was just, a hard time. So the book actually opens in Minnesota in the Twin Cities area and the author writes so believably about the Twin Cities that it was actually extra jarring when she got one tiny detail that you would like literally never know if you didn't wake up, if you didn't live in the Twin Cities during the time period she's writing about was wrong. But otherwise it was spot on just like every description of everything and I found out that the author actually got her MFA at the University of Minnesota so that's probably why she writes it so well. Then the rest of the book is actually set in Arizona and I can just presume that it's it's in Sedona, Arizona. I just presume it's probably written equally as well. I believe the author now lives in Arizona and it just has a very strong sense of place and the setting was just very like it, you just really felt like you knew where the characters were. One of the things that killed any connection I really had to the book is that Charlie, our main character, gets mixed up with the obviously bad news Riley because she like needs so much to be loved and she thinks a man can provide that. And I don't think that it was unrealistic and I don't think it was done in a way that was contrived, but it was done in a way that just killed me because I was like, no, like it's hard enough to watch my real friends go through things like this. And my friends don't necessarily go through things to the degree that Charlie does, but like definitely have friends who have made poor choices because of this need for love that they think can be filled by men. It was painful to, to read that because it's painful when it happens in real life to my real friends and so like I have read some reviews where reviewers suggest that it is like too dark or that it has too many issues and I really disagree with that I think that everything like it's a natural progression it makes sense with who Charlie is as a character like everything that feeds into her like I never felt like it was there to be a very special episode I felt like it was there because it was like a real struggle that Charlie had but for me personally like it was so hard to read that I think you have to be in the right mood to read this book and you have to be someone who really wants to kind of read through that when you do. There are homeless teens in the book. There's talk of homelessness. Charlie at one point was homeless. And I think that is really interesting and it's not something you see in a lot of YA and you don't necessarily see it in the way that it's so raw and real here. Um, so heads up, that is part of the book. Um, there are a lot of possible triggers in this book. So please go read reviews. My policy with triggers is that I will tell you if I, in a video review, if I think there are probably triggers in the book, but I expect you to go seek reviews that tell you what those triggers actually are if you have triggers that you're worried about. So you can go read my review, you can go read other people's reviews, go read reviews that tell you what the triggers that in this book are because there are a lot of them and they could potentially be a problem I imagine, but I don't actually know. The author puts a really great author's note in the end of the book kind of explaining where she came up with this book and why it means so much to her. Um, and I would, I, I really appreciated that. And I really appreciated hearing, seeing that insight. And Charlie really, there are no easy answers for her, but there are answers. 
and the long road of recovery is part of this. I feel kind of bad talking about this book and saying I struggle with it so much because I loved Underwater that I read earlier this year by Mar Marisa Reichart. And that in a lot of ways is also about someone's recovery. And I specifically said that I appreciated that it showed that recovery is a long road, that you backslide, that it's not easy. And this book in a lot of ways shows the same thing, like recovery is hard and it's never gonna be easy and it is one day at a time. But this was so much darker and harder to read in that. There are a progression of things, even though there is one big event that is particularly bad, there's a progression of other things that all contribute. And so it's just, it's difficult, but they have, are similar in that they both show that recovery is, is difficult, but is worth it. And I would like to say like in some, this book really wasn't for me. It wasn't what I needed. But even as I acknowledge that, I can see how it very well could be what someone else needs. And I think that someone who needs this as a mirror could potentially benefit from reading this book. So make good choices, kids. Uh, that's what this book is about. And let me know down below if you've read it, what your thoughts on it are. If any of you really loved it or didn't like it, please let me know. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.